short end bond yields get smashed back down after central banks aren't as hawkish as first feared. The Santa rally in stocks begins as sector leadership broadens and realized vol collapses. And gold attempts a breakout as real yields go back to the lows. All this and more in this week's Macro Insight. So welcome back to Macro Insight, everyone. Uh, today is the 9th of November, and let's have a look at these markets. So last week, biggest movers last week. So I quite like this, uh, this diagram that Macro Hive put out every week. Okay, so biggest movers last week. Um, we had front end yields collapse back down again. Obviously, the previous week we'd had five or six sigma moves up, and five six five sigma moves straight back down in Germany, uh, Swiss, UK, Sweden, etc. And we had kind of been saying that we fancied fading some of this central bank hawkishness that the market had priced in. Obviously, Bank of England unexpectedly uh, not hike rates. The Fed obviously gave themselves extra flexibility on the pace of tapering. So they delivered the taper of 15 billion a month, uh, but with a lot of flexibility built in there in the wording. Uh, and then the RBA maintained, um, well, drop yield curve control, uh, but maintained QE for now. Um, and they're going to revisit that in February. So at the margin, all of that was relatively dovish. And that's why we saw these interest rate moves wildly back the other way, right? But just interest rate, traders being caught in all kinds of uh, trouble uh, with these type of wild moves. Yeah. Now on the upside, so obviously that was the sort of big moves down. The big movers on the upside, we saw Nvidia up 15%, which is like a three sigma move. And then you had Bank of America and Wells Fargo have been calling that stock higher, uh, saying they're a prime beneficiary of this metaverse focus especially now that Facebook have kind of put a big focus on that for everyone. And then also you had the Russell 2000 breaking uh, that resistance that it was playing with uh, and, and breaking quite a decent amount higher, two, two sigma move um, on the week. And so generally, you know, we're seeing the market rally gaining breadth. And then that finally, that news of the COVID treatment pill from Pfizer helped fuel gains in the likes of travel and leisure. We saw airlines up about 6% on Friday. So you know, getting getting a bit more broader market leadership than just the text, as we had been seeing, basically. Yeah. Now we obviously we're going to have to talk about Tesla and what was going on there. So uh, Tesla obviously had its incredible run, fueled by call option buying, triggering that massive gamma squeeze. Obviously, we talked about that last week. But then Musk goes and puts out his poll over the weekend, talking about well, basically saying that you know he's going to have to pay a load of tax and you know, should he sell 10% 10, 10 stake in his company to pay these taxes? Because uh, people keep saying the billionaires don't pay enough tax. So um, on that, obviously, shares took shares were down 7% pre-market yesterday. Uh, but the stock recovered, you know, probably half of that roughly. Didn't finish in the green yesterday, but, you know, recovered a decent amount. Short, short day at Vol was completely smashed, right? So subscribers will know I've been playing that since sort of middle of last week. Uh, with an iron condor and that trade I mean you know timing wise that was all right in the end vol had popped to about you know 75 80 as you can see here and then on that news with the stock kind of pulling back a little bit and and you know the, the incentive for these uh, weekly call buyers to come in every Monday and buy the calls wasn't really there after that news right they probably want to see how the market digests that news so that kind of helped that that removal of the bid for those weekly options is what kind of helped the vol collapse down to around 66 from highs of 80, right? So worked out quite nicely on our own condor there, made about half the premium in a day. So that was Tesla. So options activity, you know, so on this, on this whole options activity, it's obviously exploding, right? So, you know, people say, people are calling it weaponized 
call options or weaponized gamma. That's what the guys at Spot Gamma like to call it. But basically, these one to two week expiries um, are being used by retail traders and not just retail traders, right? But they're being used and, and they're creating these kind of gamma squeezes. So we've got a few charts up here to kind of show on that. So we've got single stock options, notional traded, traded daily with less than two week expiry as a percentage of total notional. So you look, look over the years, how that number has been going higher and higher, reaching like 72%. I mean, that's an astronomical amount, right? In terms of notional of options traded, sub two week expiry, okay? Um, you also got that single stock options daily trading volumes were 1.4 times the underlying share volumes, right? So the notional of options being traded is 140% of the notional of shares being traded now. That's at all time high if you look at the monthly average. Now, retail options traders obviously have been a large culprit of this, but even the institutions were getting involved. So you look at some of these numbers, small lots of calls, large lots of calls, small lots of puts, large lots of puts, etc. And you saw that big spike in small lot calls, but it was also it was also the yellow line spiking as well, right? So, so large chunks of calls being lifted as well. So it's not just the retail guys getting in on the act. It's kind of becoming a bit of, if you can't beat them, you might as well join them, right? So, you know, you've got the instos, maybe the hedge funds coming in and doing similar type of trades. Then, you know, something a little bit precarious might be that not only are people piling into calls, and this, again, this one's out of spotgamma.com, Equity call options spiking, um, open, this is orders to open, bought to open trades, and then puts are getting sold, right? So orders to open a put position, puts getting sold, calls getting bought. So, you know, it's, it's all good and well burning premium and, and, and taking a punt on call options, but now people are really going after it and taking more risk and more leverage, and they're actually shorting puts to finance it, basically, right? So that's a little bit worrying. And then the, the bottom chart there showing you you know, the put call ratio uh, back to the lows as S&P is at the highs. And that we know what tends to happen, right? When we see that happen, it's usually a bit of a signal there's, that there may well be some sort of pullback coming, right? So that's that's kind of what the options activity and the option flows, those are the main charts that kind of stood out to me. Something pretty interesting, obviously, we've been talking about yesterday was the cannabis. Uh, the cannabis space has been an absolute dog, as you know, it's been in the portfolio, but cannabis, you know, uh, there's a Republican marijuana legislation bill where they're saying, you know, it's going to be fed federally descheduled and treated in a manner similar to alcohol. That seemed to be the trigger that the sector was waiting for. And it rallied about 20 percent in sort of less than two days. Right. So pulled back a little bit from the highs yesterday. But the 30 level that I've been talking about in the MSOS ETF, that's the one to keep an eye on. So it popped, it's got to lows of sort of sub 26. It popped to like 31 yesterday and then closed just around that 30 level. So there's this kind of wedge, downward sloping wedge pattern that's been forming. 30 is the top end of that. So if it can kind of hold its head above 30, then it's okay. I've obviously been long it for a while. I did manage to, I did manage to increase at good levels. Um, but now I'm kind of like, I'm going to raise my stop to around 28. This thing rolls back over below 28. I'm getting the hell out of there. Hopefully this is the news that it needed to stabilize a bit and kind of suck some buyers back in. I think there's a lot of people who like the long-term story here in this sector, but hate the price action. So let's see if the price action now does start to improve and that may induce a bit more interest in the sector and, and a bit more buying basically. So stock market breadth, breadth improves as the Santa rally begins. So, you know, we had said um, towards the end of uh, end of October that there was a risk of a melt up here, right? So you, you knew buybacks were coming back to the table. Systematic buying was still there. Um, you know, relatively discretionary money was still not overly bullish. So there are a few things that were setting up and obviously the post Delta bounce scenario that, that Darius has been calling. There are a few things that were potentially going to be catalysts for a rally. And then earnings in general have been coming in pretty good. So the S&P uh, managed to you know, go to all-time highs again. Um, and we've been monitoring this kind of area. I mean, it's generally been a long gamma zone for the market, but it still hasn't provided very strong resistance, right? So the core wall kept shifting higher. But you know, we had some we had some reasonable news last week, right? We had obviously the Fed taper got taken in its stride. 
very well telegraphed, but at the margin, the market took that as dovish. Um, and then a, a dovish taper, for whatever that means. Um, but then obviously the jobs numbers, right? Jobs numbers came out better, higher revisions as well, and a steadying of the labor participation rate. Those were things that the market took well, basically, right? Uh, obviously the NASDAQ's been on an incredible run. So we've got the S&P obviously back up to 4,700, but if we have a look at this NASDAQ, I mean, that's just gone a bit parabolic and it's looking, it is looking overbought. You look at, if you look at simple RSI, um, that's obviously at levels, you know, similar to last September. So NASDAQ overbought. Okay. So you look at the NASDAQ chart, you see the RSI at like 90 looks horrible, right? You wouldn't want to touch it with the barge pole. So the top of that trend channel, uh, it's gone a bit parabolic. That's the, that's the not so bullish um, sort of uh, look, right? If you look at, if you zoom out and compare it to 1999 and you look at what happened in the, in the real tech bubble move, this could just be getting started. So you superimpose the price action in blue of the current NASDAQ versus what happened back then. And literally what it managed to do in November, December, I mean, we haven't even started to see parabolic, right? If that's the kind of move. Now I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but just to put it into context, right? That strange things can occur and what looks to us like a bit of a parabolic move in the context of what has happened in history, you know, might just be getting started. So just be aware of that and, and probably don't go aggressively selling a load of NASDAQ calls um, sort of with that, with that kind of in mind, I would say. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's, that's kind of what NASDAQ and S&P have been up to. Obviously, you know, the sector leadership has been broadening out as well, um, which could be a sign that the next regime might go back into Goldilocks. So obviously we've kind of gone a little bit into reflation. Yeah. we had been in kind of stagflation for a bit. Then we kind of moved into reflation. We saw the Russell start outperforming. You know, we see, see a few signs of growth and inflation higher. But now if inflation starts to come off a bit because we are getting this labor participation, you know, so may maybe the kind of things we're seeing in wages calm down. Maybe we've peaked a little bit in terms of the supply chain problems. Um, if we can get inflation come back down a bit, then the market goes into a Goldilocks regime potentially, which we know is very good for risk assets, right? So that might be what this broadening out of sector leadership is trying to signal. And that's what we need to kind of keep an eye on. Yeah, it's not confirmed yet, but it's certainly something that's bubbling under the surface, right? If we look at the sectors last week, you can see, what do we have? We had retail up 6%, metals and mining up nearly 6%, tech 4%, um, consumer discretionary up 25 utilities lagging, healthcare lagging, so the defensive lagging, um, but then XLF and energy kind of going nowhere as well. But in general, you know, broadening out more sectors kind of showing, popping their head up as, as leaders, basically, right? Which is generally quite a healthy thing for the market if you see a bit of a broadening out of that and you're not just reliant on the tech sector taking as high a week after week. Yeah. Okay, so what's been going on in, in volatility land? Um, so obviously um, we've got OPEX coming next Friday. Okay, and we, we are currently at the max gamma area at 4,700. So obviously the cool wall is where we expect to see resistance, where the street's got a lot of gamma. That was originally 4,600. As the market rallied, that cool wall shifted higher. Options positioning shifted up a bit. And now it kind of seems to be centered around that 4,700 area with, you know, a couple of weeks to go into that OPEX, basically, right? Um, that number, if we stay around 4,700, that amount of gamma is only going to get higher as you get closer to expiry, right? For those who understand how that gamma dynamic works. Let me just share this. So you can see here, my friends at Spot Gamma, their chart there is showing us cool wall at 47, um, max well, gamma peaking around that 47, 47.50 area. If we sell off, they've got their vol trigger down at 44.95, which quite a ways away, I would say, right? It's quite far, it's about 200 points away from where we are now. So no, no immediate panic, right? So gives us a good 200 point range that the markets can consolidate back without it getting that sinister, basically, right? the need for vol to just explode, okay? Um, if we look at what Realize Vol has done, obviously that has been rolling off a cliff, 
Um, you go here, 10 day realized is at six. I mean, it's, you can barely see it it's all the way down here at six. You've got VIX at 17, 30 day realized at 12, and the front end of the curve at 18 and a half, which is fairly steep, 20 and a half, 22 and a bit. So it's a pretty steep curve, can tango as normal, realize vol at six, right? I mean, that, that's, that's pretty low. It doesn't generally get a lot lower than that. So, you know, you look at the VIX, what the actual VIX underlying index has been doing, it kind of seems to have found a bit of a floor at 15 again. So despite realize 10 day falling to six, the VIX managed to bounce off 15 yet again, right? It's pretty much where it's been finding a floor all year. Um, and, you know, markets, despite markets being long gamma, that it's interesting that they won't let VIX basically fall below 15. So, you know, you would really need the market to just sit here at 4,700 between now and next Friday for, you know, and some supply to hit the market, you know, as it does in expiry week, typically that may then drive that vol back down so that we can actually get our head below 15, right? Unless that happens, you know, it seems to have established that floor, yeah? Okay, and then the last, you know, we can't finish commodities without talking about uranium, right? Because that's just been on fire. Um, so obviously uranium had its big rally in September, retraced, consolidated, and then off to the races again, taking out those highs, um, momentum still, you know, needs to pick up a little bit more, but the fundamental story is just too good, right? China came out and said they want to build out 150 additional reactors. Japan is going to restart reactors. France is postponing deactivations, planning for new reactors. Green parties of Europe are calling nuclear green. It's just got a lot on the demand side that's working in its favor. And then on the supply side, you know, you haven't had much, you haven't had enough investment, obviously, and you've got the likes of Sprott hoovering up all the physical uranium, taking it out of the market, right? So you've definitely got a supply demand imbalance here. We've talked about this on the chat, obviously, subscribers will know. Um, Cuppy is obviously calling this the greatest trade at the moment and is the one that he's going all in on. I kind of agree with him. I feel like I'm too small in this trade right now. I've had it, I've had it for a while, I've done well, but I had put it into my portfolio in a vol adjusted sizing basically, right? And that's that's the right way generally is to, you look at the volatility of the asset that you want to put into your portfolio, you look at the volatility of that asset and you size accordingly. So if it's a very high vol asset like uranium, you're going to have a relatively small allocation. Same story with the likes of crypto, right? Anyone putting 10% allocation to crypto knows that they're playing with fire. That's why a lot of instos are only going to put two, three percent into crypto, okay? Because even if it goes 50%, that doesn't blow up their whole portfolio. There is an argument though, this trade is just too good to not size up. Now, generally when I size up stuff like this, I prefer doing options. Problem is options in this stuff are not gonna be cheap, right? So I haven't come to an options trade yet that I wanna do, especially here at, at this entry point at the highs. Um, but I am racking my brains to try and think, is there a way I can increase my exposure to this and feel like I am long enough? Because I certainly don't feel like I am right now. Yeah. Okay. So that's my, that's my commodities roundup. Um, and now let's go to crypto. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this content, please subscribe to our channel, give the video a thumbs up and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. To watch the entire macro call, which includes the live Q&A and a walkthrough of all my top trades, you can sign up for a free trial to Macro Insight. If you join our exclusive trading community, you'll get access to our Telegram group, and you'll also get weekly market reports summarizing the macro call. The link is in the description to the video. And for more information, you can connect with us on socials, or you can visit our website, options-insight.com. Thanks a lot.